Yo, what's up YouTube family? It's your boy Kuz. We back into with another hot TikTok reaction video. Today we're gonna be reacting to some creepy and bizarre TikTok reactions. I'm talking about the kind that's gonna have you rethinking reality. With that said, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, man, so you'll be notified whenever I drop some new hot content. I'm talking about the kind that you definitely don't want to miss. One more thing, these videos are for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything you hear or see in these videos. Don't believe anything that I say in these videos. Always use your own discernment. Always do your own research, y'all. Let's go. Who were the Nephilim, gigantic beings mentioned in ancient texts, but were they really just a myth? According to the book of Genesis, the Nephilim were the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men. They were described as giants who walked the earth before the great flood. The term Nephilim is derived from the Hebrew word Nephal, meaning fallen ones. Some interpretations suggest they were fallen angels who procreated with human women, creating a hybrid race of giants. These beings were said to be incredibly tall and powerful, towering over ordinary humans. The Bible even mentions famous Nephilim like Goliath, the giant slain by David with just a slingshot and a stone. Drop a comment with your thoughts on the Nephilim so far. Are you intrigued by this ancient mystery? Numerous ancient cultures, from the Greeks to the Native Americans, have tales of giants roaming the earth in prehistoric times. The Greeks had their tales of the Gigantes, a race of giants born from Gaia, the earth goddess. Native American folklore speaks of the Sitaka, or Tainted Ones, who were giants that once inhabited the American Southwest. Archaeological findings of unusually large skeletal remains and megalithic structures like the pyramids of Giza have fueled the speculation that giants once existed. However, mainstream science attributes these finds to natural causes or misinterpretations. Were the Nephilim real, or are they just mythical beings used to explain the unexplainable? The mystery continues to captivate and divide opinions. And don't forget to share this video. Paramount Studio. Man, how many of y'all think the giants, the Nephilim, once roamed the earth? Let me know down below in the comment section. Me personally, I do believe they are real. Feels that mountain is Mount Hermon? Yes. So supposedly the mountain is actually a mountain in the United States or something like that. But we know that they put symbolism and they show things in our face. And it shows, if you watch the Paramount logo, you know, the beginning of the movies and stuff, it shows fallen, angel, fallen stars coming down, yeah. hovering over the waters, and then they go around a mountain and they congregate. Well, if you read in the Book of Enoch, that's exactly what they do. They fall down, they congregate around a mountain, and they make a path. I'm never gonna look at it the same. <laughs> Definitely something to think about. So the sons of God were angels who had, had relations with women, you know, took wives of them. <laughs> Obviously it's right in the beginning of the Bible. Like it's like, how did I not see this? I think maybe my comic book brain as, as, a, as a young boy, I liked comic books. This is the story of the Titans in the Greek mythology. So the gods came down and they had wives, they had, they had human wives, and they created this breed of heroes like Hercules and Apollo. These were the giants, the men of renown. When it says men of renown, it's actually referring to the, the Greek mythology men, okay? The giants in Greek mythology and the beings like Hercules and Achilles, the men of renown. They were renowned and well-known for their superhuman strength and stuff connecting to that. I realized that the stories of the Greek mythology could be real. The possibility that that, is, that was a real thing, that blew my mind. Now in Greek mythos, the gods, like the Olympians, like Zeus and Hades and the others, are considered to be giants. And their parents, the Titans, are considered to be even bigger than they are. Now. Where do we find a story of giants in the Bible that possibly have superhuman strength or abilities? Oh yeah, they're called the Nephilim. Man, I've been telling people for years, man, that those the ancient guys of the myth, you know what I'm saying, the uh, Roman mythology and all that stuff, man, Zeus and them was Nephilim, man, and Hercules and them was demigods. They was Nephilim too, you know what I'm saying? They was a human and half human, half God. Come on, man, think about it. That's all I'm saying, just think about it. Make your mind with the, I know. Mm -hmm. 
In May of 1912 at Lake Delavan, Wisconsin, a lost race of giants was dug up at a burial mound site. The dig site was overseen by Belliot College and included more than 200 effigy mounds. Here's an article on May 3rd in the New York Times saying strange skeletons found linking the large skeletons to a lost tribe that lived in Wisconsin. It's said that these skeletons had six fingers and six toes, just like in 2 Samuel 21 verse 20, which says in still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. He was also descended from Rapha or giants. In the news article, we see that someone from the State Historical Museum will investigate the discoveries within a few days. This happened at every giant burial site, in which case the giant bones were taken, never talked about again, or destroyed. Man, it's a reason why they hide the bones. It's a reason why when they go to the old Smithsons, I mean Smithsonian's, man, hey, never to, never to be heard or seen of again. There's a hidden history mm -hmm. that has been deliberately covered up. We've been yeah. lied to. For All sure. over the Nephilim who fled, they left physical proof of did. their existence and they gave us they call it megalithic architecture mm -hmm. which are these stones that are like the the weight of them is it's almost you can't even comprehend it's it's massive with no human explanation of how it could be done just like you were talking mm -hmm. about they left artifacts remains like mm -hmm. these elongated skulls giant yeah. giant skeletons all over riddled mm -hmm. all over the world and even they say our modern day engineers they look mm -hmm. at these things that they have built and they and can't explain how these massive monuments and no. abandoned cities were constructed no. they, can't they can't duplicate it with all of the machinery that we have with the the computers with mm -hmm. all of the, the technology right and they cannot duplicate what was done thousands of years yeah. ago and we're told these people these tribes were not connected with each other all over the world yet they all have the same story yeah. that these sky gods came yep taught them how to build these things yeah. and then you read about the nephilim and right. how they were created and it's right. like well it makes sense a whole lot of sense right now i want to ask you this question how long do you think the government has known about this and known that the giants the nephilim were real do you think that's why they go so hard against christians and god and you know think about all the satanic stuff that's going on right now in the world Something to make your mind wonder, something to make you think. That's it. Question everything. I used to think that the Nephilim, the biblical giants who were recorded in Genesis 6, only existed before the flood, until I watched the video that I'm going to show you now, and then my mind opened up. It's rumored that in some remote locations of the earth, far away from the busy cities, there's still a race of giants, the offspring of the Nephilim, that still exist to this what? very day. Kandahar, Afghanistan is one location, and the Solomon Islands is another. Today we'll look at the Solomon Island giants. The Solomon Islands is a sovereign state located in Oceania to the east of Papua New Guinea. The state includes six Oceania. major islands and over 900 smaller islands. The capital, Haniara, is located on the island of Guadalcanal, which became a famous battleground between U.S. US and Japanese soldiers in what is now known as the Solomon Island Campaign of 1942 to 1945. Oh, wow. The remote islands were left undiscovered to the rest of the world, inhabited only by an indigenous people who had lived on the islands for okay. thousands of years. In 1568, a Spanish explorer by the name Alvaro de Medina became the first European to discover the islands navigating the oceans from Peru. After discovering the islands, Alvaro named them the Islands of Solomon, with the belief that he had found gold, and not just any gold, but the place where the biblical King Solomon obtained the gold for his temple in Jerusalem. Rumors of such an important wow. find reached explorers in other lands, and in 1595 and 1606, more Spanish expeditions set out to uncover the truth. The discoveries of gold reported by and Dana were never verified back then, but in more recent times, companies have managed to mine a large amount of gold from the islands. There's thought to be a substantial wow. amount of gold still buried throughout the land. The native people who have inhabited the Solomon Islands for thousands of years have passed down traditions and oral stories of giants living in the land, much like many other cultures from around the world. And these people living on the islands still believe that these giants exist today, and that they're living in caverns in the earth and caverns in the islands that connect to the islands what? where the giants don't even have to get out to see the light of day if they don't want to. Here's the testimony of Marius Borium, a helicopter pilot who lived on the Solomon Islands, heard many stories about the giants, and claimed to have encountered them himself. Marius Borium lived and worked in the Solomon Islands as a helicopter pilot and engineer before marrying one of the natives. He learned more about the islands and the indigenous people as well as the folklore surrounding them. He learned about the Solomon Island giants, which supposedly inhabited the caves throughout the islands. The Solomon Island giants were Maybe said to be over 10 crazy. feet tall, with evidence that suggests the giants can grow much taller. The surprising features of the Solomon Island giants are similar to other creatures around the world, like Bigfoot 
and the Mongolian Almas. They have very long black, brown, or reddish hair, bulging double eyebrows, red eyes, flat noses, and large mouths. There are thought to be three different species of giants, the largest over 10 feet tall. Or some body positivity feminists. <laughs> Those are the real Nephilim. <laughs> okay, anyways. But still bigger than a human. This helicopter pilot, Marius Borium, wrote a book titled The Solomon Island Mysteries, and here's a quote from that book. It is linguistically ironic that the Solomon Islands peoples name their undiscovered to the modern world race of humanoids the giants. As throughout history, including in the Bible and other prominent books, the same name has been used oh. in other parts of the world to describe these huge, elusive, subterranean humanoids. The Solomon Island giants have become a topic for further research, often led by Marius himself. Marius writes that some of the giants were killing and stealing humans from their villages. He speaks of a huge rogue killer giant attacking the indigenous people. Quote, this monstrous giant was an elusive and cunning creature that stalked its victims and often crept around the villages at night to seek its meals. He goes on to explain that many warriors had died trying to slay the giant before villages had to be moved to other parts of the islands in order to protect their people. What? The Solomon Island giants are said to have social structures and there are possibly thousands of them which inhabit Jeez. Guadalcanal to this day. They use complex cave systems to pass from one side of the island to the other without ever having to see daylight. That's the end of Marius's part of the story, but there's also claims and reports that Japanese forces encountered these Solomon Island giants as well when they battled the United States on the islands in the 1940s. Between 1942 and 1945, Japanese and U.S. forces engaged in heavy fighting on the islands, which became known as the Solomon Islands Campaign. During this conflict, Japanese forces would experience first-hand encounters with the Solomon Island giants. They reported seeing creatures around 10 to 15 feet tall, which would sometimes come charging at units of soldiers. Their bullets had little effect on them. While suffering from attacks in daylight, soldiers also had a hard time sleeping as they could hear their fellow comrades wailing through the night as the giants launched more attacks. The cannibalistic nature of the giants struck fear in the hearts of the Japanese infantry. The wow. giants of the Solomon Islands are common knowledge to locals, but along with stories of foreign encounters and sightings of footprints, there could be more truth to the stories than we realize. We know that giants existed before the flood and after the flood. The story of David and Goliath, that happened far after the flood of Noah. So somehow the Nephilim and Did their they? offspring, the giants, were able to reincarnate or come through some dimensional door or something along That's these true. lines. That's a topic for a different video. But they did exist okay. after the flood. And we know this because not only the Bible tells us, but we see in cultures all around the world that had no contact with each other, all have depictions of giants before the flood and after that in their architecture and in their cave writings and in their teachings. We also can look at these cultures and see not only did they all have stories of giants, but they were all for some reason building pyramids. We can look at the ziggurat of Tepi Salak in Kashan, Iran, 3000 BC. Of course, the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, 2500 BC. The ziggurat of Ur in the city of Ur in Iraq, 2100 BC. Those areas are all close to each other, so you can make the theory that they somehow saw or had contact with each other and made those. How about the Qinxi Mausoleum in Zihan, China, 210 BC, or the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, Mexico, 100 AD, and lastly, the Praying Temple Kolkir in Cambodia, 940 AD. So not only did all these cultures have stories and depictions of giants, they all, for some reason, were building pyramids, showing that somehow something was going on in the earth in those days where these things were all connected, but they had no contact with each other. And that's the proof of the fallen angels and their mingling with men that existed in the earth back in those days, as pulled to us in Genesis 6-4. There's quite a few verses in Bible prophecy that make me wonder, are the Nephilim and their offspring returning again in the last days? And two of those that I'll mention now is in Revelation 9, we're told Maybe. that there will be an army of 200 million strange things, creatures, horsemen, that it will be a plague that will kill one third of man. We don't know what they are. They're, they've got strange attributes to them. They could be some type of Nephilim offspring that is brought back to life for the last days, deluge of war that is brought upon the earth. Another verse that would back up that theory would be Luke 21, 26, talking about what? in the last days, men will faint from fear and anxiety over what is coming upon the earth for the powers of the heavens mm. will be shaken. So men will faint and fear from anxiety of looking upon the things that are coming upon the earth, something so frightening, maybe even the Nephilim and their mm. offspring, resurrected, brought back to life through some type of wicked supernatural event that will take place to usher in Earth's last days. Man, that is crazy. One thing I do want to ask you, do you think the Giants had something to do with building pyramids? Me personally, I do. I do think so. Let me know what you think, though, down below in the comment section. What if the reason the United States invaded Iraq wasn't because of weapons of mass destruction, but actually to get the DNA of Nephilim and giants? Now that may sound far-fetched to you, but listen to this email sent to government officials on the Freedom of Information Act website, requesting documents pertaining to the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh, the location of his body, and the location of the buried Nephilim. That was sent on December 13th, 2018, and the status of that email is closed. We also have testimony from museum curators saying that the very first place that the United States military went when they invaded Iraq was to museums within the heart of ancient Babylon. This may be one reason why the CIA is investing so much money recently into DNA editing firms so that when they get remains or artifacts with Nephilim DNA, they can actually extract them and resurrect them back to life like they're trying to do now with extinct animals. Come on. We know they up to some slick shit, man. We know. We know. Definitely know. 
man purporting to be a soldier who said he witnessed the giant of Kandahar. Mr. K claimed he saw the giant carrying a spear and murdering a United States soldier named Dan before he and the other Special Forces members took it down. The killing of the giant, Mr. K said, took place during the height of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2002 when the military was engaged in fierce battles with the Taliban and their de facto capital in the Kandahar province during the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. Giants human-like beings of tremendous size and strength. Fairy tales such as Jack and the Beanstalk have formed the modern perception of giants as stupid and violent creatures, sometimes said to even eat humans. Giants have appeared in many ancient texts, including the Bible. In the book of Genesis, giants are named the Nephilim and are descendants of fallen angels and human women. Genesis 6-4 reads, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children unto them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. Around the turn of the 20th century, the New York Times, London Globe, and the Scientific American published articles purporting the discovery of gigantic human skeletons, concluding that the remains were sent to the Smithsonian for further study. But the fact that this evidence was never again seen or reported continues to elicit questions of whether the Smithsonian destroyed or hides giant skeletons in order to cover up an inconvenient anomaly in the archaeological narrative we've been told. So are giants real, or are they just stuff of legend? And if they are real, why the cover up? In a now deleted video first posted on August 16th, 2016, L.A. Marzulli interviewed Mr. K. It all began when in 2002, a group of soldiers went missing while on patrol in the remote region of Kandahar in the south of Afghanistan. When they failed to make radio contact for some time, the army sent in a special operations unit to investigate. Then while searching for the missing unit high up in the mountains, the special forces unit came across a cave with scattered army equipment around, but no sign of the missing soldiers. And that's when they chanced upon the Kandahar giant. Though the tale grows with each telling, some reports suggesting that the humanoid grew as tall as 15 feet, this red-headed giant with six digits, leather moccasins, and smelling like dead bodies, suddenly emerged from a cave and attacked the soldiers, impaling one with a spear. That's when the soldiers opened fire. Between them, the squad was armed with M4 carbines, M249 light machine gun and an M107 Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle. This much firepower concentrated on one target for one second, let alone 30, would be extremely destructive. After the troops killed the giant, they called in for an extraction. A Chinook helicopter came and they loaded the giant into the Chinook, which carried it to a transport plane. And then no one ever saw it again. The soldiers were forced to sign an SF-312, the government's version of a non-disclosure agreement in order to keep them all quiet. But eventually, the soldiers broke their silence, because as one of the men would say later, people have the right to know the truth. Man, how many of y'all heard of the six-finger, six-toed, red-haired giants before this video? Let me know down below, man. That's crazy, and it's like you said, if you've been reading that word, you've been heard of them. You've been read up on them, but that is crazy, man. Let me know if you really think they are still here somewhere lurking, somewhere in the shadows, maybe under us. Let me know what you think down below and why you think that. Scientists just discovered biblically accurate angels and what they found will shock you. A newly released study by the Royal Astronomical Society shows documented evidence of a strange phenomena known as Dyson Spheres, where they were able to detect intelligent life harnessing energy around home stars. When they released the official footage, the form in which this intelligent life was displayed shocked many. But the reason why this was so mind-blowing is because this looks exactly how the Bible describes a class of angelic beings known as the Ophanim. In Ezekiel 115-21, the prophet Ezekiel details about an encounter he had 
out with an angel, and he describes their appearance as wheels intersecting wheels, with the rims around them all covered with eyes. Scientists unknowingly prove biblically accurate angels to be real, and this is not an extraterrestrial phenomena like they think, but actually an interdimensional being that the Bible spoke about thousands of years ago. Science does not disprove Christianity, but instead validates it because the closer you get to truth, the closer you get to God. Everything is being revealed in this hour because these discoveries are a call to action from God himself to return back to him before it's too late. Seek forgiveness of your sin and ask God to cleanse you because now is the time to surrender to Jesus Christ. Man, come on with it. Did the body of Nephilim turn into mountains? Check this out. Bodies of the Nephilims turned into mountains. It is known that when fallen angels mate with humans, they end up producing offspring that in the Bible are referred to as the Nephilims. These creatures are a powerful group of people that are said to bear insane strength and are huge in size. However, somewhere in the history of humanity, they all just vanished. Now, this might sound crazy, but there is a theory that it was during the flood of Noah where the majority of the Nephilims were petrified and their bodies eventually became the mountains that we see today. Over the course of history, there are references to this like in the 1948 speech given by Abraham Lincoln, talking about a species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mountains of America, or that hikers who hiked up mountains and caves say it resembles a giant human shape. So, comment what you think. What you think? You think the Nephilim, the giants, they got unalive through the flood, turned into petrified, giants to mountains now and uh is that where we get our pink himalayan salt hmm something to think about let me know down below in the comment section me i don't know i think that part may be a little bit too much maybe they petrified but i don't know about the pink himalayan salt but you never know you never know man like i say truth is always stranger than fiction absolutely baby let's do uh, it i've said it once and i'm gonna say it twice quit playing with me about giants the black areas are the cave system inside the United States. Please look at how they line up where giant bones have been found or the giant bones are outlying the caves like they were trying to get out of the caves and didn't make it. Hmm, I'm telling you, come on now. Something In 1911 goes. at Lovelock Cave, Nevada, miners exploring for bat guano stumbled upon over 40 giant human skeletons. The skeletons measured between seven to 10 feet in height with some having abnormally large and elongated skulls. Many of the skeletons were found with red hair, six digits on the hands and feet, oh, as well as two sets of teeth on the top and bottom jaws, distinguishing them from Native Americans in the area. Over a hundred thousand artifacts were excavated from the cave, including giant-sized sandals and clothing, suggesting a population of giants. Giant bone discoveries were not uncommon during the Wild West era, with several reports of similar findings throughout the southwestern United States. The discoveries fueled fascination with the idea of a giant race, echoing biblical references to giants living on Earth. Descendants of the Paiute people recounted a historical battle with red-haired giants known as the Sai Duka'a, who lived near the Paiute nation and were cannibals. A three-year war ensued between the giants and the Paiute people, culminating in the giants seeking refuge in Lovelock Cave, where they were ultimately defeated by the Paiutes. Evidence of extreme burning near the cave entrance aligns with the Paiute legend. Artifacts and reports of giant bones found in other parts of western Nevada support the Paiute story. While some may dismiss the Paiute legend as folklore, many view it as a genuine historical account. Could these bones be the remains of Nephilim giants? Offspring of Anunnaki watchers and human women. Mmm, the Nephilim. See, man, that's why I always be saying that what people say that the Anunnaki and this and that, that we come from them and that we gon' we will wait on them and play Nibiru and all that, man, don't be believing that, man. The Anunnaki 
or the fallen ones, the fallen angels coming down to mate with. Just listen to the story. It's similar. It's the same thing, man. It's and they gonna tell you it's older and all this and that, man. Boy, the devil's biggest job is to, to deceive, man, to make you think, man. What's his greatest gift to make you believe that he does not exist, man? Come on now, make it make sense. These people out here trying to deceive y'all, man. Yeah, they might be cool and make some good videos sometimes, but don't be deceived. Don't don't fall for the boo boo, man. Y'all know my saying. That's it. Don't fall for the boo boo, man. We out here, we're rare breed. Only the rare breed people out here gonna understand this. This we the hybrid types, and I don't mean it's hybrid as in half angel. You know what I'm saying? I mean it's hybrid. Y'all get where I'm going with this, man. The holy ones, you know, the chosen ones. The hybrid types, you know, we gotta we gotta take they lingo and make it our own, you know. Let's go, you know. Don't fall for the boo boo, man. I want y'all to spam that in the comment section. Don't fall for the boo boo, man. Don't fall for the boo boo, man. That's what I want to see in the comment section. Spam it up. We rare breed hybrid types. Don't fall for the boo boo, man. Spam it up. Rare breed. We got some more merch coming out. Rare breed is coming. There were definitely giants in the past. You heard of the Nephilim. Imagine 10 Shaquille O'Neal's stacked on top of each other, okay? Now imagine an event happened that turned those giants into stone. In another video, I told you guys about how animals were found combined, like animals from the Arctic, animals all over the world were found with each other, like there was a flood, but there was something that caused those animals to flash freeze and be perfectly preserved in ice. Now, these same events happened to the giants, but instead of freezing in ice, they were turned to stone. Now, what can do that? Let's get into it. Now, I'm going to do my best to make this video short and sweet and concise. Now, when I say short, I mean 10 minutes, so 10 minute lecture, okay? How did Pompeii volcano turn 20,000 people into stone statues with one eruption destroying the entire city overnight? Many people may not know that there was a city of Pompeii in this world. Vesuvius was the culprit that could make Pompeii disappear completely overnight. Nearly half of the mountain has been cut off and the city at foot of the mountain has long since become rubble with moss covering the ground. The entire city of Pompeii, buried under volcanic ash, was not spared, and thousands of remains were wrapped in volcanic ash. An eruption turned 20,000 people into stone statues. What happened? Vesuvius, an extinct volcano, unknowingly woke up and began to erupt on August the 24th, 79 AD and volcanic ash spewed out and landed in the ancient city of Pompeii with a hidden tendency. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius had a huge impact on Pompeii. The city with a population of tens of thousands was instantly covered with three centimeters thick volcanic ash and the maximum temperature of house to house roofs also reached 140 degrees Celsius. If Nelly only knew how hot it could really get up in here. At the beginning, people living here were very surprised and didn't even know that what was going on. As the smoke billowed and the volcanic ash became more and more, people thought of escaping, but the whole city was plunged into hell, facing the overwhelming volcanic ash and the people of Pompeii had to wait in fear for death to come. Now I want you to pay attention to this next part and the words that are spoken. The painful process of the volcanic eruption experienced by the Pompeii people is the most advanced suffering in the whole world. At that time, the mud flood hello, rushed into Pompeii at a speed of 160 miles per hour. The entire Pompeii became purgatory, and once prosperity was wiped out from the earth at that moment. Now, people often ask me, how could a mud flood happen? How could you somebody, how can the mud liquefy volcanoes? If you want to read a little bit more, you can mm -hmm. read down here where it says the various forms of stone statues are chilling. Just as a warning, the photos that I'm about to show you could be graphic. So um, you might want to stop here if you feel like you cannot stomach it. Oh, man.
and this is just another source from news.com.au. Guatemala volcano death toll rises as bodies turn to statues. Rescuers found victims of the Guatemala volcano so thickly coated with ash they appeared to be cast in stone as the death toll rose. People of the villages skirting Guatemala's volcano of fire became mourning the few dead who could be identified after an eruption killed dozens by engulfing them in the floods of searing ash and mud. <clears throat> in a way, it's kind of like when people are caught in a fire, usually it's not the fire that kills them, it's the smoke. In this case, it's the ash, volcanic ash, and the mud. For the sake of time, I'm just going to read you at the, uh, the bottom paragraph here where it says, Bodies were so thickly coated with ash that they looked like statues. Now, this might be a reach, or it could be related. Um, this article says how a volcano turned a man's brain into glass. And I was thinking how when some of these giants were frozen, like their insides could be turned into, like it could be crystallized and turned into crystal. Some people even believe that Himalayan salt belongs to the organs of said giants. Scientists have recently discovered that a young man who died in Herculaneum had his brain tissue vitrified or transformed into a glassy substance by the extreme heat of the volcanic matter that buried him. This is the first ever discovery of ancient human brain remains vitrified by heat, according to a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, it wasn't only the Nephilim that were turned to statues or stone. It was also giant animals. Like I've said in other videos, when you have trees, like huge trees that can touch the, the ceiling of the, the earth, the firmament, it gives off more oxygen, or I believe it's like a higher form of oxygen of those trees. You know, I think that we get oxygen from our trees, but those trees were given off something a little bit different. So it could, it made the animals grow larger as well. And those animals, along with the giants, were turned to stone, as you can see in this photo. Take a look at this photo. And this animal here just looked like he was about to pounce on a prey. Next thing you know, he was the prey. Here's a giant, I don't know, anaconda. Looks like he was just chilling or slithering up, you know, on a prey. This man looked like he was just chilling like, huh? That is. is that lava? Now, just it could be unrelated, but here's a side note. Were these statues like a message? You know, because ancient civilizations built monuments like Stonehenge to record weather reports. And were these stone statues like a message to leave to us of what could happen? Now, there's a lot of evidence that this, these Nephilim, these giants, Man, a boy dropping them gems, y'all, man. Y'all don't hit the like button, man. Run them lights up, man. I know y'all liking the video, especially if you're still watching it this far. I appreciate y'all. And if you're new to the channel and you subscribe, I appreciate y'all. And I appreciate all the fellow subscribers already to help me get this far to 7K subscribers, man. Y'all the real MVPs. Never forget that. I'm always very, very, very appreciative of y'all support, man. And y'all watching, man. Believe that, man. Let's go. Science really did exist. Look at the size of this book. And this book lets you know that it was more recent than you might think. What language do you believe that is there? Here's another one with some humongous books. Check out the size of this book. So these seem to be like they were wise beings. Check out the size of this bone in comparison to an average size human. But you know, they don't, they don't teach you this in the, your curriculum mm. at school. But this is real life. This is real history. Now here's an ancient turtle shell. Take that in. Look at the size of this turtle shell in comparison to, well, this, this, this man is average or below average height, but still look at the size of this, this turtle shell. And here's another one for comparison. The animal can grow as large as this tank and the oxygen that it's given. So with that being said, was the cutting of the trees strategic to eradicate the giants yes we still have redwoods we still have sequoias which are very tall i've been to the general sherman i've seen i was amongst the giant trees but still you don't see them everywhere and in the old days they were everywhere 
just take a look here. Yes, the the volcanoes turned them to stone, but the, what happened to the giants that were left? That were they turned to eating humans? Did the humans retaliate by figuring out that their main source of oxygen were these tall trees? Hello, alert. Why else would you be, would you be so adamant to just go and search these trees to cut down? You know. Could you imagine the oxygen we would be breathing in right now if we had most of these trees still standing? This is from the USDA. I don't know why, but buried alive, the petrifying true story of a forest turned to stone. Pause to read. Pause to read this page as well. Essentially, it's telling you how this volcano turned a, a forest into stone. And you know I love to show these fact checks because they tell them themselves. Devil's Tower National Monument was formed by magma. Tree claim is false. The claim Devil's Tower National Monument in Wyoming was once a giant tree. Basalt. More than 90% of all volcanic rock on Earth is basalt. Columnar basalt formations like Devil's Tower and the Giant's Causeway have amazed and mystified humans from time immemorial. Hello. I mean, what the f anyway, that's all I have today. The moon is in cancer, so I'm going to chill. If you like this video, make sure you like, share, follow, and let me know what you think about this in the comments. I love y'all. Peace. Think for a second, guys, and ask yourselves this question. How is it that Greek mythology, what people call mythology, has survived for so long? These stories, these legends of these people who were half God and half human. And where did this come from? And if it were just a fairy tale, how could it survive all of these years? And just like the Bible and the Word of God has survived the test of time, how is it that these legends have done so also? And if it is true, how would it all make sense? How would it all correlate with what's written in God's word? In Genesis 6, it says that the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they took them wives, all that they chose. And the same became mighty men of old, men of renown. If you guys want a clear insight of what's going on and try to make a connection y'all seriously need to watch the ancient angels film and this is a great film it was produced by demon erasers and it's also featuring jt and i'm gonna tag them both here in this video and you go check them out you go support them they also got a podcast and you need to go to ancientangels.com to watch this video i'll be posting a couple clips of it but y'all need to go support them so when we talk about genesis there's a section genesis 6 genesis 6 4 when nephilim were in those days and also afterwards when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they bore them children those were the heroes of old the men of renown they were half angel human hybrids that took over the whole earth and the reason why God flooded the earth was to end the beginning lineage of these human angelic giant hybrids okay it was to stop them from continuing to procreate all right a lot of people like to say oh no that's talking about the sons of Seth it's clearly not talking about the sons of Seth and read it in the Hebrew text guys it's it's very clear that it's talking about a different race of beings and every time it refers to the sons of God in the Bible like it's always referring Man, that thing just shut like that, man. Just stop. That's crazy, man. Well, like I was saying, man, don't fall for the boo boo, man. They've been putting it in front of our faces the whole time. With that said, that's the end of the show, y'all. It's your boy Kuz. I'm out. Y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell on your way out. I'm out. Holla.